What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Jay Real at the Real Hip Hop Show. Where hip hop is everything and everything is hip hop. Y'all already know how we do it, man. It's your boy Jay Real, man. Yeah, I mean, I told y'all, man, I've been, I've been, I ain't gonna lie, man, I've been kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of antsy, man, waiting on this interview right here, man, you already know, man, I waiting on some more people to come in on the live and just check out what we about to talk about, but, you know what I mean, within the meantime, man, I like to, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, how can I, how can I introduce this person, man, but, uh, I want to introduce my special guest, you know what I mean, uh, Crumb Snatcher, what's good, my dude? What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Man, I'm 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 doing good. You know what I mean? I'm doing real good. <laughs> yes, sir. That's a great thing, man. That's a great thing, brother. Oh yeah, man. Again, you know what I mean? Thanks for you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, just taking out the time, you know what I mean, to even come on the show, man. Oh man, my pleasure, man. Uh, definitely, man, it's an honor, man, to have um an opportunity, man, to get your voice out there, man, and, and be able to tell your side of the story, man. So uh, thank you so much, Jay. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, man. It's never a problem, man. And and you know, what I mean, your side of the story, you know, what I mean, in my opinion, you know, what I'm saying, really needs to be heard. You feel what I'm saying? But, yes, sir. You know, before we get into, you know, what I'm saying, his side, her side, the truth. You know how that go. You know, what I mean. Yes, sir. It's, I want. I mean, I always do the introduction, but I like for my uh my guests to introduce themselves at the same time. So, Crumb Snatcher, you know, what I mean, introduce yourself to the people, man. Yes, sir, man. Uh, my name is Crumb Snatcher, you know what I'm saying? That's my artist name. I've been around like 25 years from, the, you know, the Gangs, the Gangstar Foundation is where I started from. Um, you know what I'm saying? I've been a personal artist, a guru on the Ill Kid, um, the Training Day soundtrack, uh, m- multiple uh, albums, man. I've been, uh, been on, I have uh, eight albums out, working on my ninth album now. So, you know, doing an indie, man. So, you know, my label, Mind Power, my, part, my partner, Justice Hype. We, we, we going in right now, Jake. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt, man. And, um, you know, man, because, you know, me and you, we've been, we've been speaking on a lot of things. You know what I mean? Just, you know, off right. air and off the show and everything, man. And mm-hmm. I've been really, really bragging about you, my G, because a lot of us, you know what I mean, hip-hop heads, we grew up on your music, man. You know what I mean? Well, uh, yeah, that, that that's great, man. That, that, I, I, I'm really grateful on that, man. Thank you so much, brother. Oh yeah, man, for sure, man. So we go, we go, we gonna start from the very beginning. Now, I mean, let's start from the beginning, cause I like to start from the beginning. You feel what I'm saying? Cause if you don't know where you're going, you know what I'm saying. You don't know where you're from. You'll never get to where you're going at. You know what I'm saying? So, right. Let's start from the beginning, man. How did you know? What I mean, you start rhyming, and what what made you decide to start rhyming, and you know all that good stuff. Oh, man, really, man, like my sister's um, father, my stepfather, man, used to be like a DJ, man, and and uh, he used to get all the exclusive records, man. So the first time I heard um, UTFO, man, Roxanne, Roxanne, he was playing it on, like, the uh, the spinning, the, the reels thing, man. I forgot how you say it, man, but the, the things that spin the reels, he was playing the song, and I was, like, in my room. So I came out, man. I was like, damn, that shit sounds dope. I want to learn how to do that. So, you know, um, from that, man, that, uh, well, I used to live in Brooklyn, too. So I had a, a, a feeling for the uh, for the breakdancing and everything of that nature. But once I heard that song, man, I, that's when I wanted to rhyme. I tried to DJ a little bit, but the rhyming, man, was my thing. So I just started, like, writing rhymes and, and like, doing my thing, man, at 11 years old. And, you know, I, I never stop, man. I'm 45 now, so, you know, it, it never stops. No doubt. So early on, you know what I mean, who were some of, you know what I'm saying, your influences? Oh, uh, definitely I would say cool. Back then it would be, it would have been a cool G rap. It was a uh, rock him. Um, up into the, uh, to the, to the closer stages, it was Nas. And now I'm, I'm a big Jay-Z fan. I like his business acumen. Um, I like how, you know, the things that he talks about as far as how his life goes and, and where he's at now as a, as a successful businessman and a, and a good man in general. So, I, I mean, it's more than just like the artists. I, I, I study how they live their lifestyles. So, I mean, you can't, yeah, man, you can't like, uh, I don't want to say an idol because you can't have idols. God doesn't like you to have idols. So, indeed. So, yeah, so people that I I admire, I mean, those are the artists that I admire, man. I, I admire their, their skill, their craft, 
and, and they're really great artists. So, you know, that's who inspired me to start doing music at a younger age. No doubt. Well, I'm going to say this, okay, because I got to. And I, and, and I don't mind saying this. You listening to your music growing up, you one of the people that inspired me to end up doing what I'm doing right now. So That's wonderful, man. Thank no, you so much. No doubt, man. So... Let, let me uh, let's let's talk about how you um you know how did you get involved with uh Wu Tang management? Yeah, man, you know it's so crazy, man. Like um, my partner, um, one of my homeboys, man, I knew, um, I knew his brother, man, from around my way, man, and, and he and I, he introduced me to his brother, and I ended up introducing him to Guru, and um, Guru ended up signing um, Black Jesus, who's one of Guru's artists on Ill Kid, and um. And then, you know, after Guru passed, man, I really, uh, you know, I was, I ended up uh, working with kids in a martial arts school. So I, I wasn't really feeling like doing music anymore. And they called me up to uh, to New York, man, and like introduced me to Rizzo and everybody. I met Rizzo through Guru uh, previously. But then I had, um, they invited me into the studio with him when he was working on the Afro Samurai thing. And uh, from there, we met um, John Mo Gibbons, who was Rizzo's cousin who was uh, the manager of Wu-Tang Clan. And from there, man, like, they presented me with a contract. Uh, shout out to Jimmy Kang. Um, he was instrumental in making making the deal happen. He's actually the vice president of uh, Wu-Tang Management now. So, yeah, man, like, it, you know, it was just a blessing, man. It come, You know, it, it was a blessing in disguise because I wanted to quit music. I actually uh, was tired. I wanted to work with the kids. Right. I was... Um, yeah, I was instructing the kids in, in, in the martial arts thing. And I really wasn't really interested in the music, man, especially after Goody Pass and all that other stuff. So, um, But I had an, another opportunity, man. I came up there, met a lot of the brothers of the Wu. And I ended up meeting, like, a, all of them, like a majority of them, and it was a great thing, man. So I ended oh, up yeah. signing with them. Yeah. Now, that's, that's what's up, man, because... You know, a lot of people probably didn't know, you know what I'm saying, that you was even involved in, you know what I'm saying, like Wu-Tang at all. You know what I mean? They would just think just straight gangstar. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's a quiet movement, man. The last, I would say, two projects I put out was under the Wu-Tang banner, a Wu-Tang management. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just going through my chambers and everything and, 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 paying, and paying my dues. I'm going through those chambers. You, you, you was with Wu-Tang management and everything like that, and that's what's up. Let's get into, you know what I mean, like how you, how did you meet Guru, you know what I mean? How did you meet Guru and, you know, DJ Premier and everything? Um, Actually, man, um, I was with an independent um, record label, man, around my way in Lawtown. Shout out to Lawrence, Massachusetts. Um, I had, uh, I was supposed to meet with Premier before I ended up getting shot up and then getting locked up. So, um... I was supposed to do a song with Premier, so I, you know what they did. They brought some of my lyrics that was already recorded for my first album, and they brought it to Premier. And Premier was like, um, "I'd rather have him um, in the studio with me." Right. So after I finished, um, well, they bailed me out. Well, I finished my time, and they and they brought me to New York to see Premier, and he put on the "Close to the God" beat. I don't know if y'all heard that record, "Close to the God." Yeah. And uh. Yeah, and he was like, he put the beat on. He was like, yo, go in the booth, man, and let me see what you can do. And I had already wrote, I mean, I had just got shot, you know, and um, I was in the infirmary, and then I wrote the song Close to the Guy while I was locked up. So I went in the booth and just started spinning the lyrics to that. And he was like, what? Word? Yeah. Yo, we keeping that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, from there, he kept the record, man, and we released the Close to the God um, single. And then um, one time I was in D and D, you know, the D and D studios. Yeah. And he was like, "Yo, Guru man wants to meet you." So, you know, I was actually in another. Uh, I think I was in the B studio room, and like Guru came in and was like, "Yo, you from my same area, man." And we just started kicking it, man. And I mean, it was like he's like a father figure to me, man. God rest his soul. No doubt. I mean, like a big, like a big brother. I mean, we just, like, we just hit it off the first time. And, like, you know, we just started kicking it about, you know, Massachusetts and things of that nature. And then from there, man, like, I mean, I, I was just going to the clubs with him. I was just, like, partying with him at first. I mean, 
before the music stuff. Yeah. And then um, they ended up inviting me on the Gangstar album. So, you know, they invited me on the Gangstar album. Um, I did the, uh, the Make Them Pay joint for the Moment of Truth album. And I ended up getting a hip-hop quotable for it on the Source magazine. And you know, because I you went in on the <laughs> yeah, I mean. yeah, man. I, good look, brother. I mean, I didn't even have a record deal. I was an unsigned artist, man, just like fresh out of jail, out of prison, man, and like just was trying to just make it, make it die. And then from there, you know, like I started just running with Guru. He started taking me on tour with him. I mean, we've been to like 23 countries, man, in Europe. And then he took me on tour in Canada. And, like, he wanted to take me off into, like, Africa. And I was like, yo, you know, my daughter was just born. My uh, my middle daughter was just born. So I, I had to get off the tour. But um, it's not much love I got for Guru, man. Because, like, he got off of the tour and to come to my wedding. Like, he he, took, he went off the tour to come to my wedding That's when I up. got married. Yeah. And I... Right there, showed me, man, how much love the brother had for me and how much love I had for him. You know what I'm saying? Because when I was on tour, like, we was in Iceland in certain areas, and he was telling people, like, he was telling the crowd, like, yo, this is this is my uh, my protege. This is the one that's going to come after me. Oh, and and for me, yeah, I mean, for me, like, it caught me off guard because I was on the stage with him, and I'm performing with him. And he's like, yo, this is the one that's going to take over for me and things like that. But, you know, and that's not to put that out there now because the brother passed away, whatever the situation is. But, yeah. I mean, a genuine love, man, never mind the music. That man was my brother, man, my father figure. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. I have love for the man. And then he ended up sending me to his label, Ill Kid. So not only was I Gangstar Foundation, he put me in Gangstar Foundation, not DJ Premier. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? Right. Guru put me in Gangstar Foundation, and then he signed me as his personal artist on Ill Kid. So he was booking studio sessions for me, and he was grooming me on how to do my records and everything. Like, he spent time in the studio with me. And mind you, this is like a gold artist. I mean, this brother, I mean, this is the brother I used to watch MTV (laughs) Raps. Yeah. I used to run home from uh, elementary school to watch MTV Raps and see Dwick on there. Yeah. Yeah. And now this is my mentor. Talk about the uh the the studio experience with uh Guru. It was wonderful, man. I mean, Guru had this thing, man. God rest his soul again, man. Like he don't have to tell you what's going on. Right. You know what I mean? It's just his aura. He'll, I mean, you understand what you're doing right, what you're not doing right, just by his aura. Mm. And, you know, he didn't have to explain things to me, man. He would just let me know what was right and what was, wasn't right. Even when we were on tour, I used to watch him, how he conducted his interviews. Um, or, like, uh, much music and, and all, all of these things um, overseas, how he conducted himself. I would study him. I would watch him. I'd be hitting into the crowd and watching him. And everything that he did, I watched. I mean, he was an elder. Yeah. He was an elder. And it was a privilege for me uh, being, a, a, I mean, some cat man fresh out of, you know, the block or whatever the situation is. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? And, and to be picked off uh, the situation that I was living and to be given, to be given an opportunity to travel the world with a, with a rap star, man, it was great for me. Yeah. I, he didn't... Go ahead, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, Jay, I'm sorry. No, you fine, No, no, man. I'm sorry, brother. No, you fine, man. So, okay, um, I know, like, okay, being in the studio with such... I mean, I'm just going to be honest, man. You know what I mean? Being in the studio with such greatness, you know what I'm saying? And and and, and that experience. So what was, like, like being on tour, how how was that, you know what I mean, with, with Guru and, you know, and Gangstar and, you know what I mean, and everybody, you know what I mean? professionalism man it was it's just professionalism even dj premier dj premier is a little bit more a stickler for professionalism guru was a little bit more lenient mm. you know yeah. but they were professionals they were professionals man I, I i mean i don't know about these other artists today on how they conduct themselves and how they move and do their thing 
but I know I learned from pioneers. And these brothers, man, were uh, professionals, man. They were professionals. I don't know what happened towards the end. Um, you know, after I did the training day record, I moved to Florida uh, with my wife at that current time. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what happened uh, with the relationship between those two. I don't know what's going, what, what happened there. But um, as far as when I was with them together, I mean... It was a pleasure, man, and it was a blessing to learn under those two. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sure it was. You know what I mean? Um, being, you know, with Guru and being around, uh, you know, getting production from DJ Premier and being around. Because uh, matter of fact, because you work with, you know what I'm saying, some other great artists and great producers also, right? Of course, man. Knots out there in Virginia. Actually, I was working with Knots first, man. Um, I mean, the premier actually um, said he admired Knotts. Mm. Um, not to, uh, you know, he worked with Dr. Dre, he worked with um, Busta Rhymes, a lot of people, man. And actually, man, I just spoke to Knotts and him um, last, a couple weeks ago, like last month. And they want me to come back down to Virginia to work on a new album with them, man. And like, Knotts is like the supreme, like, hip hop cat, man, out there in VA, yeah. man. He, he, yeah, man, that's my brother right there, man. He's the one that introduced me to Pharrell and all those cats. Those Virginia cats made it tight on what they do. So, you know, I work with Knotts. I work with um, uh, Easy Mo B. That was Biggie's. Uh, yeah. He produced Biggie. And he yeah. produced Pop. Yeah, I work with um, Alchemist. Yeah. I work with Pete Rock. I, mean, I work with so many people, man. It's a long list of uh, B minus. Um, a lot of a lot of producers, man. I was blessed, man, to go through the chambers. Yeah, and and that's that's a, you know, what I mean, a strong category, a uh, a uh, uh, a strong, you know what I'm saying, variety of people to work with. And with you working with them, what what did you learn, and what experiences, and what did you take from, you know what I'm saying, being around those people? Honestly, man, my my main thing was, I was young back then. And the things that I was rapping about back then, I won't rap about now. Right. But um, just professionalism, man, how they came in and they did their job. One thing I always remember uh, when I was recorded with Alchemist, he stayed in the studio with me till like four or five in the morning and slept on the couch until that record was done. Oh. And in my mind, yeah, I, that's professionalism. Yeah. That's professionalism, man. That brother, man, would, he sat and laid on the couch until it was done and woke up and started mixing the record. Yeah. So that's the main thing I learned with a lot of these artists, man. Even Molly Maul. I've been to Molly Maul's crib and had uh, I did a record for his radio show and things like that. I mean, it's professionalism, man. You, I mean, there's, there's a the street part of the thing, but there's also, man, the professionalism to it. So you got you can't mix the two. Right. If you want to be a street cat, stay in the streets. Right. If you want to be a professional artist, be an artist. You got to separate the two. Exactly. And this is why a lot of brothers is getting killed in this game because they're trying to mix the two, and they shouldn't. True, indeed. Because a lot of people can't understand. You are gonna have to choose. You can't. You can't do both. And that's something that I be trying to tell a lot of people. You know what I mean? On my show, I tell them, like, you can't be in the street and rap. You're going to have to pick. Right. I mean, the music, man, it should be an avenue, man. Uh, it should it should be, a, an, a, yeah, an avenue for you to be, el to be able to leave that life alone and to show people that you can make a change and you can do better. I mean, not everybody make it. It's like basketball. It's like football. I mean, everybody want to rhyme right now. True. So, I mean... Yeah, man. So, I mean, if you get the opportunity and you're fortunate enough to be there, don't encourage other cats, man, to do the stuff that, I mean, that you, I mean, the negative shit, excuse right. my language, the negative nah, you good, stuff. you good. Yeah, man. I mean, like, you got through the door not through gangbanging and doing what you're doing because you did something right and got the right ears and did the right thing. Right. So don't mislead the public, man. No doubt. Most definitely. And, I mean, that's, that's as real as you can put it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's what people don't be yeah. understanding. You know what I mean? That's what, you know what I mean, I, what made me fall in love with hip-hop was 
how real it is, well, how real it was, do you feel like hip-hop is still real, or is it kind of, you know what I mean? Um, I can't judge Jay, to be honest, because I don't really listen to music too much. I'm, I'm on my reggae kick right now. No doubt. I'm just, Yeah, I'm listening to Roots and Culture, man. I love reggae, man, because it's a spiritual music, man. And, and Yeah, man, from Bob Marley on and Dennis Brown to all these great like reggae artists, man. I love the message that they're giving in the music. And you don't hear that in hip-hop right now. Not not, not as much. No doubt. Can, uh, you know, I... I yeah. Yeah, I, I feel you because it's it's like a lot of it is just be like whatever. It's like they don't care. That, that's how I feel. You know what I mean? It's like they don't care about the art form anymore. They don't care about the art form, nor do they care about their life. Mm, true indeed. And, and this is this is why a lot of brothers, man, are trying to. And, I, I, and I'm not trying to judge, and I'm trying to, not trying to say that I'm better. Right. Because I understand, I understand that that situation, and I was fortunate enough to survive. I got shot five times in the shootout. Right. You understand know what I'm saying? So, like, that was an opportunity for me to realize, like, look, the Lord gave you another chance, man. No doubt. Now, what are you going to do with that chance? So now that I'm seeing a lot of these younger rappers coming up, man, and, like, they getting murdered right like, right after they like successful videos. Mm, true. And they're doing videos about them dying. True. They yeah, they calling death on themselves. Mm. That is So true. I mean like yeah, I mean you can't play with death, man. You can't call it on yourself, man. Like do something uh what may, what helps you get out of that predicament that you were in for the world to love you. For the public to love you, right? You completely right. Let me um ask you this question: Have you um have you heard the new um Gangstar album, or skimmed it, or anything? Okay, Jay, we going we gonna be completely real right now. Let's be real, man. Okay, no, I I haven't listened to it. Um, I wasn't invited on it, and this is not being spiteful. Um, I didn't even know they were making a new Gangstar album. And to be honest, I felt insulted because that's my big brother and my elder. Right. And I traveled the whole entire world with that man. So if any anybody who would have anything that would he would want to say or to try to hold him down, it would have been me. No doubt. I'm not speaking for anybody else. I know this uh, group home and this J. Rule and those are other chambers that was early in Guru's career. But in his later career, I was his artist. I was the one that re that was running with him across the, the countries. I was the one that was knocking niggas out in the club for him. No doubt. And that's real. So I felt insulted. And, and this is not hate on Premier's, no hate on on uh, on, on, on uh, Shook or any of them. But I felt insulted, man, because I risked my life for that brother. Right. And I was holding him down. That was my that was my elder. For me not to be even notified, invited, okay, if even if I'm not invited on it, please tell me, because that's my big brother. And it don't even matter, because I don't even really care, to be honest with you. I'm still going to rock for Guru, man, because that's the one that showed me love in this game. No doubt. So no, no matter how successful I get or I don't get, I give praises due to Guru. No doubt. No doubt, and that's peace to Guru. You know what I mean? Well, it's fun. So, like, as like, why do you think, in your opinion, you know what I'm saying? Why, why don't you think they even, you know what I'm saying? At least let you know that they was working on it. You know what I mean? Tight as you and Guru was, I feel as if they should have said something to you. I mean, shit is so crazy, man. Because I had spoke to Premier a few times before the album, before he was working on the album, and I kept asking him, like, yo. I'm not doing good right now, man. Like, I'm going to college. I'm trying anything that I can do to survive. Right. Because I'm not getting the money that I'm getting. I'm starving and broke in the streets. I'm asking for a beat. I'm asking for a chance to sign on a label. Anything. Right. I was denied all of it. Wow. Left starving, riding the bus to go to school. Wow. I mean, I'm hurt, man. 
Yeah. I'm being honest. And I could, I, I could completely understand why. You know what I mean? So, I mean, like, what do you think? What do you think? Uh, And I'm going to use Premier, to be honest. I'm going to just say him. You know what I mean? But why do you think? Again, you know what I'm saying? What what you think his problem is like with, with you per do you think it's a personal issue or business issue? Or what do you think it is? Let me be completely honest with you, Jake. When I was dealing with Premier, Premier got me to deal with Steve Scout on Interscope. Before the fifty cent situation and all that, mm -hmm. before the M and M and the fifty cent and all that, I was signed to the Trackmasters. Uh Trackmasters was my A and R. Uh, Anton, uh, Foxy Brown's brother, Anton Marshan. He was my um, A and R. So I was signed by Steve Stout, the commissioner, you know, the firm and Nas and all them. They signed me to a deal, a multi-million dollar deal, like one point three, one point five million dollar deal. By a mistake, I ended up getting in the car, um, one of my homies' cars. I didn't know he was supposed to do an insurance job on the car. I was already on parole for a shootout uh, this, when I got shot. I was on parole, whatever the situation was. Right. So somebody called the car in and stolen, whatever the situation is, blah, blah, blah. And I ended up getting locked up. And my parole officer, he didn't want to hear that I had a multi-million dollar deal waiting for me. He didn't want to hear that I was about to be signed in the scope and all these situations. The contract was done. Right. I was supposed to go the next day to put my signature on it. And then I, and I ended up getting locked up. So this is how I feel that Premier has been holding his grudge against me to this day. Hmm. And, then, and then for me to go with Guru after. And for Guru to sign me to his independent label and work with me as an artist, I think maybe they've taken it personal. Personal. I love Premier. And I'm always grateful that he, he brought me into this game. Right. He introduced me to Guru and everything. Right. But I still remember, man, I've been starving this whole entire time. I've been starving this whole entire time. That's not family to me, man. A beat, anything would have helped me to come out of the condition I was in. And I wasn't granted that. So I ended up doing what I needed to do on my own, creating my own label and doing my own thing with my own family, creating my own group wolves and all that. And I don't have no hard feelings towards them. I just know what it is. So when they, I wasn't invited on the Gangstar album, I already knew what it was. Mm. I don't expect handouts. No doubt. I work for mine. I'm, I'm working on my ninth album now. No doubt. And I think I think that's, to be honest with you, you know what I mean? Especially, you know, as close as you was with Guru and the things that you went through with Guru. I mean, I'm just going to be honest, man. I feel like it's, it's disrespectful. You know what I mean? I'm just being honest. Yes, it's, it is. it's disrespectful. You know, and then you got people that'll probably say, well, they don't owe you nothing or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they do. I'm sorry. We talking about real life here. Outside of the right. music, outside of the studio, outside of the tours. I mean, you, you stood up for this man. You know what I'm saying? Like, with things, right. like, because when things were going down on tour, you were the one punching people in their face and all of that. Exactly. And I mean, even before, I mean, even beyond that, Jay, like, I was there for that brother. Whenever he needed me, he was there for me. I was there for him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Only time, and this is the whole thing, man. If the whole situation with the Solar shit, you know what I mean? Speak on it. They end up getting, they getting the vocals from that brother to do the album. To do the new album? Right. Oh, That's wow. all vocals from Solar. Oh, wow. So this is the shit my, people don't know. So if if if, if Solo wasn't really uh really down with Guru, if that was really that situation, I was there when Guru met Solo. Mm. I was there when he met the man. I was there when he was in the studio and all that shit. I was there when he met Solo. I knew the whole shit with them with those cats. Right. You are damn right. Now I mean I'm gonna ask you this also. You know what I mean? Do you think that uh? 
eventually, you know what I mean, like you and, and, and Primo might sit down and, you know, talk about it or, you know what I'm saying, like hash it out and straighten things out or you you don't see that happening? I mean, I'm, to be honest, I got love for Prem and everything, but the 15 years, or uh, let me say the 10 years that I starved in the streets, and I'm being honest with you, man. No doubt. Be, this when, a band, when, when somebody can take you out of your condition, who can take you out of con- your condition, but refuse to, mm. and leave you starving in the hood. I was eating out of food pantries, my G. Right. I'm hurt. I'm good, man. I got my own label. I'm doing my own thing with my partner. Justice Hype, we doing our thing, Mind Power. I mean, I got no hate for the brother, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing my thing. I just seen Abu Ra complain on, on his Facebook about about the whole situation. But, I mean, my perspective is different. No doubt. So what what, what was Abu Ra? personal artist. What was Abu Ra uh, complaining about? I mean, I just put it on my page, man. He's... He's highly upset he wasn't invited on the album, and oh, he just yeah. came off a Gangstar Foundation tour. Oh, wow. They shit it on him. So, I mean, it is what it is, man. Right. But, I mean, that's my past. I'm grateful for coming through that chamber, and I'm grateful for coming through the Wu-Tang management chamber. But now I'm doing my own label. I just won my whole catalog for myself. Now, you know what? Really you know what? I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. Let's break that right there down for these up and coming artists. You said you just you won. You know what I'm saying? You pretty much won your music, right? Break that down for yes, me. Yes, sir. Break that down. I mean, like the whole thing is, man. As an artist, sometimes you. I mean, when you're just coming up, you have people that invest in you, and you have things of that nature uh, where you don't really control the masses, and you really don't control your music. So, I mean, you have to, like, work for these labels and work for these people and do all of this work for these people. I mean, I've been in this game. I mean, I'm not going to say in the game professionally 25 years, but I've been putting out records for 25 years, independent. No doubt. And, and just now, at 45, I just got my whole catalog for myself. So I can do whatever I want with any record that I've recorded since I was 19. Ooh. Ooh. That's 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 what you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? Now, um, like, so, okay, explain to people <clears throat> that don't understand that, like, you can have all the talent in the world, right? But you got to right. learn that business side. Right. That that was the mistake that I made when I was coming in, um, through the game. I was being showered with gifts. I was bought like $5,000 chains. I was giving uh, like all type of gifts. I was riding luxury cars and all these things, but I wasn't shown my report or what my records is doing or what I'm doing or what the situation is. So my business wasn't right. And then like I did the, uh, the training day soundtrack. Yeah. You had, um, you had the first song yeah. on the Training Day soundtrack, matter of fact. Yes, sir. And they played in the movie, and yeah. they played at the end in the credits. Yeah. And, and Denzel Washington won his first Oscar for that. Yeah. <laughs> now, would you believe, Jay, I'm still not getting paid for that today? Wow, really? Word is mine. So do you have to, is it that you got to, you still fighting for it? Or like you got to go to court, go through all of that? Or how does how does that process work? Cause that's my, my up. cousin, a- yeah, man, my cousin Averex, he's an artist too, man. And like, he's the one that's schooling me on. Like, he's sitting me down. We just had a conference call today. Like, he's the one that's breaking down the points and doing all these things for me. And I'm learning at this age on the mistakes that I've made like 15, 20 years ago. Right. So this, yeah. So this is the thing that these artists don't want to do, man. You want to make sure that you know your music, man, and you want to know the business beside, behind it before you, you know what I mean? Before you end up like me, right? fighting to come back and chasing your money from 10, 15 years ago. And you making dope, and you still making dope music. That's what's crazy. Oh, man, thank you, brother. I appreciate so, it. 
with with all of that, now we're gonna we gonna get back to the business side, but I gotta ask you this while it's on my mind. With all of that that you've been through and everything that's still going on to this day, how do you find the inspiration to still make great music? Suffering, man. Suffering. That I mean that's just, just being completely honest. Suffering, man, makes you talk about more. I mean, when you in the hood, man, and like you seeing things, man, things that you don't want to be a part of, man, but you have no other choice because you there, you you there. Right. I mean, just that, just being and witnessing those things, man, keeps the drive in you, man, to come out of that condition. And 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 really, I don't depend on everything for the. Mu- I mean, music ain't everything for me. Right. I'm, I'm trying to do new ventures now. I, I find a partner out there in BK, just a side shout out to, to Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and we doing a clothing run, line thing. He's writing books. We talking about distribution. We doing like a, a TV thing we trying to do. I mean, I'm learning to be a businessman now. No doubt. But that's, So, that's, you know, me, yeah, I'm sorry, Jay, go ahead. No, you fine. You go ahead, man. You go ahead. My bad. No, I was just saying, man, music, man, is now a hobby for me, man. I, I mean, I don't put my all in all. I mean, I, when I do the music, I put my all into the music when I do it. But now, I don't care. I mean, I'm not looking for anybody to to help me or anybody to validate me. As long as I make music that's good with me, Oh yeah, I'm good. I can look in the mirror. I'm good. You know, a lot of, a lot of, see, what you're saying right now is what I try to tell a lot of people. And that's why I'm so glad, you know what I mean, to be able to have these conversations, you know what I'm saying, with OGs like yourself, you know what I mean, that take the time out and talk to us about this type of stuff. You know what right. I mean? Because yes, sir. because it's, it's like they don't really realize, they think that they're going to make a song, get on YouTube, and blow up. Please explain to them that's not how it works. I mean, a lot. Of, I mean, then you have like the artists, man, who have the money, man, to be able to funnel and pay for those views and right. do those things. And a lot, of, and this is where it comes, where a lot of these artists are, are like drug dealers or whatever. They, what they do, they have the money to invest in themselves. And then for those men who do have the talent but don't have the money, you have to find other avenues. Hmm. My main thing is to say is don't give up. I've been suffering and struggling and trying to get in this game and get recognized for 25 years. No and I never gave up. And I still don't give up. No doubt. Never give up if you believe in yourself, man. No doubt. And that's real. That's as, that's as real as it can be put. You know what I mean? So, like, okay. And I know you just said that, but I want you to keep on and just and, and, and just give it to them all the way straight, my G. Because it's the real hip-hop show, and I want you to tell them. You know what I mean? When, if, what advice would you give to an up-and-coming artist for real? You know what I'm saying? Like, let them know. Well, honestly, Jay, first thing I would say, man, is to be able to understand the business. Grab every business-minded book that you can when it comes to this music. You have to understand your craft. You can be the dopest MC in the world, and you're going to get jerked if you come in this game thinking because you don't that you're going to get all these glories and riches and all these great things. Hmm. And come in with the right intention. I mean, do the music, man, because you love it. Well, think about when you wanted to do music, what you've seen or what you heard that made you, that made you want to do music. Keep that vibe in you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't think about trying to floss and trying to do all these great and extravagant things because you can't take that to the grave with you. Leave a mark. Do something significant for the public or for the youth, for our people who are struggling and suffering in the streets. Do something significant. Use your voice to do something significant. That's the only thing I would say. No doubt. No doubt. And and like you said, and learn the business, you know what I mean? And and do that. Right. You feel me? Now what's what's so what's you know, let's 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 brighten things up. You know what I mean? What's 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 new for Crumb Snatcher, man? What you got co- going on? What's new, man? What what music can can we look forward to, man? 
Oh man, brother, I just um I just dropped a um a project called Shinobi, man, for all martial martial art heads, man, that love martial arts, man. Um, I mean, I always loved martial arts since a kid, man. But since like I I came into the Wu Tang fold, man, I started like really going in in the martial art flicks and really doing my thing with it. So you know, I did um a project called Shinobi, man, just um which means ninja. In Japanese, you know what I mean. So I just did a whole project um, with my with my brother D Future, man, my my little nephew, man. He, he's tight on the beats, man. So we did a whole project. It's on Bandcamp, Mind Power ENT Bandcamp, and um, we put that out. And uh, and then I created like a mixtape series with my partner Justice Hype, man, called United Nations of Hip Hop. Word. Yeah, man, and, and what we did, man, we grabbed every artist that raps in their native tongue in their country, and then we put them on a mixtape. I mean, it's so dope, man. We yeah, mix them like, yeah, man, we mix some producers from different parts of the world with rappers with different parts of the world, and and we creating a whole mixtape, a global mixtape, man, of you know trying to get the world closer to each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, man. So we were actually working on United Nations um, 5. So any artist, man, who wants to to be a part of United Nations of Hip Hop 5, man, just um, send me music, man. Can, can I say the email? Yes, sir. Yeah, get, yes, sir. Yeah, it's um, CEO Mindpower ENT 81 at gmail.com. Send your music through there, man. We would love to have brothers. Out there representing man for the global public, man. Say that, and, e- and say that email doing. again. They, I want them to hear that. Say that email again. Yes, sir. It's, it's CEO Mind Power. That's M I N D P O W E R E N T 81 at gmail.com. No doubt. You know, that's, that's actually, you know what was crazy is I've never ever even thought of nothing like that what you just said right there like bringing you're bringing the world together with hip-hop yeah man you know what i mean that's 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 amazing actually man i mean i mean i I learned uh when i was traveling on tour with guru about how many people love hip-hop that's where i got the idea from like i mean i've been to like 23 countries with guru and i seen the reaction i mean these people don't even understand english Right. And they quoting the lyrics. Wow. So when I seen that, man, I was like, man, if we can find an avenue, man, to bring this world together closer without the politics. Right. I mean, the politics divide. But if we can find a, a neutral ground, man, where we can have people, man, like unite, man, and, and, and just tell a story, even if it's in another language, man. I mean, we can understand each other through a uh, a universal language, which is hip hop. No doubt. Wow. <laughs> no, that's that's like you really kind of just blew my mind right there. Because like I said, man, I've, I've never even thought about that anybody would even think to do something like that. You know what I mean? Wow, man. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate it, brother. So let the people know where they can, you know, like where they can uh, follow you and find you and and listen to the music. I'm talking old school, the new school stuff that you're doing. Everything, man. Yes, sir. Well, on Instagram, it's at Crumb Snatcher 7, and, and Crumb Snatcher is K-R-U-M-B-S-N-A-T-C-H-A 7. And then um, same thing on um, Twitter. And you can check out Mind Power Entertainment on Facebook. We got our call in line, man. I mean, y'all come, come through. My wife is working on my website right now for me. Um I mean, it's an uphill battle, man, because we don't have a million dollars to invest. I so understand. it's more, yeah, it's more legwork. It's more hard work, man. But the more people, man, that we can get, man, in the fold, man, and the supporters, we're grateful, man. It'll be great. For sure, man. Okay, now people are, are asking for that email again. Hey, they, they want to send their music, man. So, you know what I mean? It's a lot of, I got a lot of producers, a lot of rappers, a lot of yeah. people that make music on that, that, that I play their music on this show and they want to be a part of what you're doing, man. So say that email again. I'm going to put it right here in the comments, man. Say that email again, G. Okay, it's C-E-O, Mindpower, M-I-N-D-P-O-W-E-R-E-N-T for entertainment, 
81 at gmail.com. We want producers. We want rappers. I mean, hey, Jay, you sent me some, some bangers, uh, some beats that was crazy too, man. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, if you can get some, some, some foreign artists, some artists in a different language, man, over your beats, man, that would be glorious. Oh, yeah, man. I, I, I know some artists um, in Africa. I know artists in yeah. um, Australia. I know artists in yeah. London. So, yeah, yeah, man. Let's get it, brother. Let's get it. Yeah, most definitely, man. I put that email down there for them to send that music, man. You're gonna get you're gonna get some some music. I can promise you that. And I'm gonna keep working with you. You know what I mean? You know the things that we got working on. I'm I'm just yes, sir. I'm just honestly, G, I'm just proud and I'm and I'm thankful, you know what I mean, to even be able to be a part of what you're doing. You know what I mean? So that's that's what's up, man. Thank you. No, no problem, brother, man. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, you giving me the time to be able to voice. Oh, yeah, man. So, and, yeah. And, and you can stop by anytime. Anytime you want to jump on the show, you let me know. I let you know. You can always come through, man, and, and, and give some knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Drop some game on these cats that's trying to come up and trying to learn about the industry, man. I love you, my brother. Word is by. No doubt. One love that's to you, too, is. my G. That's what it is, brother. Hey man, I, I appreciate it, man. I'm a um, you know what I mean. You know I'm gonna hit you up after I get off the live and everything, man, because I really do appreciate you coming through, man. I I'm gonna throw some of your music on too, man. You know what I'm saying? Yes sir, man. Yes sir. Well, I'm gonna be tuned in with the wife, man. So we good. For show, sure, man. Appreciate it again, my G, man. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you so much, man. And good night and God bless, man. Everyone that was listening, man. I appreciate you. Already, man. Peace. All right, Jay. Peace. I mean, there y'all have it. You know what I mean? You you hear it from the OG mouth, man. You hear it from, you know what I'm saying, one of the people that not only inspired me, you know what I'm saying, that inspired a lot of people to do what they're doing. You know what I mean? He's trying to let y'all know, like, this game is real. The people is, is, is real. You know what I mean? It's a lot of things that go on with this. You know what I mean? It's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears really put into this. You understand? So... Like, a lot of people, I don't think they really understand that. You feel me? Like, listen to what he was talking about, about his relationship with Guru, about the things that he went through. You understand what I'm saying? So, you want to be a part of this game, man. You got to understand that it's real. You know what I mean? And speaking of real, it's your boy J Real at the Real Hip Hop Show, where hip hop is everything and everything is hip hop. Man, if anybody missed it, I'm sorry. We're going to... You know what I mean? Um, put it on the podcast. Of course, you already know y'all can go back and listen. Y'all can go back and look at the live. Y'all make sure y'all share this. Y'all make sure y'all pick this game up that was dropped for y'all. You know what I mean? You already know how we do, man. I'm about to get into some of this crumb snatch, though, man. This joint right here is called Rise. I fucks with it. Y'all need to check it out. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all need to fuck with the real, real hip-hop, man. It's your boy, J Real, man. Appreciate all y'all for tuning in. Everybody that shares, comments, likes, follows. Everything, man. Appreciate it, man. Y'all check this uh, this crumb snatcher out, man. This joint right here called Rise. Now, what I normally do is I get off and just let y'all vibe to it, but I'm going to vibe with y'all on this joint right here, man. Check it out. Let's see here. Yeah, I mean. Like, real talk. That's a, this, this, this dude makes some dope music, man. I'm telling you, man. And, and, and that's my thing. You understand what I'm saying? Like, There we go. Y'all got to realize that. You know what I mean? But check this out right here, man. It's your boy, Chrome Snatcher with Rise. It's on his heart. Listen to the song and, and, and listen to what we just spoke on, and you will get a great idea of what's... Check it out. Just check it out. Shit. Trying to find the right road, record after 
record got me chasing these deals. Now I finally realize I'm how unhappiness feels. Missing meals on the subway, I'm catching the train. And my pockets more than skinny, no describing the pain. But an iron will remain and the focus to conquer. Frustrating when you're broken, nobody don't want you. Had a buzz in my career, but lately it's slowed down. Was working with the kids, but somebody was low down. Posted in the plug, I'm an addict in rehab. With tears in my eyes, I'm so rude, but they see bad. Is it really worth it? I deserve it if I just stay down. The profit's not respected if you live in the same town. Finally, I'm finding me the man that's in the mirror. And after all the struggle, now I come to see it clearer. All the ups yeah. and the downs, the fails, the tries. Been to fight my whole life, now I realize. No matter on the struggle, make a recognize the pain in my eyes, but still I rise. Still I rise. Still I all I remember is the stretcher laying up, all I see stars Waking up, I'm in the hospital, all I see guards My life took a pause, bullets riddled my body Asking for the angel, calm down, can he guard me? I knew I did some bad, dear Lord, but I'm sorry Another chance, I changed, do some service, just call me Now every day, appreciate the life that I've been given Took a turn for the better, now I like on how I'm living Without the arguing, struggles and beats Back and forth, sitting out of jail, lost in the streets So now we're on the corner, look for children to teach Can you rap, what's your talent set, give me a beat Make a label, find a partner, now I'm deep in the biz No discussions, it's just touching up, I'm reaching these kids And I gotta say, I'm all proud today Cause I make somebody smile when they miles away All okay. the ups and the downs, the fails, the tries Been to fight my whole life, now I realize No matter on the struggle, make a record the pain in my eyes, but still I rise Still I rise Still I rise All the ups and the downs, the fails, the tries Been to fight my whole life, now I realize No matter on the struggle, make them recognize The pain in my eyes, but still I rise Still I rise Still I